best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I want to give an update on the Warren Ellis situation. Um, you, you, several of you may be rolling your eyes clicking away right now, and if it doesn't interest you, that's the right thing to do. Please do. But um, as we heard from a while ago, there was going Warren Ellis was going to enter into uh, voluntary mediation, which sounds very legal and formal. And basically, he was going to sit down and talk with some of the accusers and try and get to, you know, a, a, a path forward. Where it got slightly complicated or, you know, became less of a conversation, more of a requirement, is that Image Comics, which was about to produce Fell and, uh, and, and presumably other work from Ellis, basically said that they would hold off on any of those plans until he completed his, his journey, his, uh, this mediation, until parties were satisfied. Which I said at the time felt like a, a bar that was going to be just, just, it's not a clear bar, like when that process is done. You know, nothing is out, you know, nothing is laid out. So it became this strange target that could be tomorrow or 20 years from now. And I predicted at the time, and I, I still hold by it, that if sales fall, and the belief is that Warren Ellis will bring sales, magically that bar will have been reached. It's like, oh, well, amazing, he did all of his work. And uh, coincidentally, we've got a comic coming out from Ellis, and it's one that will make us some money, so that's good news for everyone, yay! That's how I feel this thing's going to go. And I still feel that way. I, I don't feel like this is any kind of any kind of planned process. It's kind of a slow boat process that um, it'll be over when people say it's over or when they need him to make the money. And that's that's kind of where it sits. But before I get into kind of the statement that was issued and I, some comments there, I, I want to put this out there. And when I say things like what I'm about to say, it's every single time people come in the comments to call me a pussy, a cuck, whatever it happens to be. Uh, I'm wrong for this kind of point of view, and I don't particularly care, <laughs> just, just for what it's worth. But I want to offer this. Um, as you know from listening to my videos and other things, I've got two daughters. Um, I want them to grow up, you know, good in the world. I want them to grow up in a fair world, a fair world for, you know, women and men. I want uh, them to be treated fairly, and I also want them to treat others fairly, which includes, you know, which includes men. I think that everybody deserves to be heard, uh, that, you know, we, we should listen to all sides and we should make the best judgments we can. I think we've seen examples in the comic industry where that hasn't happened. Eddie Brzezinga being one of them, but, but many others where there have been uh, dodgy, nasty shit that's gone on and people have gotten away with it. Um, and that's, that is, uh, that's wrong. And I think part of what you're seeing in the comic industry is, is somewhat of a reaction to that, where publishers let it go and ignored it, and then now we're dealing with this stuff. Um, it doesn't mean it's an open book to just attack people whenever you want. It doesn't mean that it's one of those cases where, you know, men have to be completely guarded and women can do whatever they want. And if you ever upset somebody, you're going to have a, you know, a, a somebody chasing you and you're going to have problems. Um, I, I think that you certainly see evidence that that's where some of it's have gone. And that's wrong too. I, my basis is fairness. It should be fair for everyone, everyone involved, which yes, includes women who have been treated poorly at times in comics and men who have been accused unfairly and been treated poorly at times. That's, that's, I don't think this is a very controversial statement. It's not a middle of the road statement, by the way. It's simply a, Hey, we should, you know, we should be fair. We should live by laws. That's, that's how I think things work. So all that said, uh, we get to this statement, and the statement doesn't make, uh, it doesn't, it, I don't know, it, I'll just read it to you. So, uh, basically, um, again, to recap, uh, this entire Ellis situation happened. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, you know, go go back and read. I'm not going to recap that aspect of it. But uh, he had a comment coming out. Image said they will not print it until he had made amends. This uh, created the So Many of Us uh, website. And uh, that uh, last June, so seven months ago, eight, almost eight months ago, uh, Warren Ellis said he would accept the offer to do mediation, and that's that's where we landed. So here it is February. What's going on? So the update reads as follows. Today, so SMOU, that's so many of us, so S, today SMOU's active membership is significantly smaller than the original group of 60 plus people who drove the publication of so many of us.com. We celebrate those who have found peace in disengagement and consider it a win that many have moved forward in their healing. That is some spin. 
I'm just saying that is one hell of a lot of spin. But but in fairness, if there are people who moved on in their lives, good, good, good. I'm glad you I'm glad you found peace. The group working on transformative justice with Warren Ellis will be now referred to will be referred to as SMOU hyphen TJ. Okay, continuing. All members, past and present, are invited to engage in planning, support, and decision-making at their preferred level of participation. All right. Just as, uh, as an odd set, um, when you start getting into NWO and in NWO Red and Black and NWO Wolfpack and all this, and you start, it starts to feel, starts to feel kind of weird. But okay, just saying, S-M-O-U hyphen T-J, that stands for So Many of Us dash Transformative Justice. The, if, if you're able to participate at whatever your level is of participation, it, it, it does kind of reinforce the idea that this is going to go into infinity. I mean, what is the, again, what's the bar we're trying to clear here? That Ellis gets 100% sign off? And why does this entire process feel like something that used to happen on the Warren Ellis message boards? Because that, that's, that's, this is a kind of nonsense that would go on there. To be blunt, they kind of like we're going to invent some acronyms. Or we're going to have some groups. I mean, everything here could be dialogue from Next Wave, but but we continue. We continue making progress in a guided transformative justice process. First, we found an extraordinary facilitator who has helped us to understand our options and clarify our goals. It'd be good to post those for what it's worth, but okay. Second, we undertook internal processes to define and practice accountability, flexibility, and democracy within our group. Third, in a facilitator-led survey, SMOU hyphen TJ identified fidelity, the decision is in line with our values, and unity, the process of decision making does not tear us apart but brings us together, as our two priority factors for decision making. Our forward motion may be slow, but it is intentional. What? What 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 is going on? Okay. Three. Uh, we're, we're continuing with this statement. SMOU hyphen TJ entered into a mediated conversation with Warren Ellis in August of 2021. It took two months. Okay. It has taken a great deal of effort and foundational work in order for us to begin communicating effectively with Ellis. <laughs> I mean, reading this statement, is anyone surprised by that? Okay. We acknowledge the slow, challenging process and also acknowledge it's simply too early to report on where it's heading. Jesus Christ. Or where it may end up. We would like to emphasize Warren Ellis as the option of working on healing and recovery independently. And that this work is necessary whether or not he continues to work with us. Yeah, but he has to work with you in order to get work at Image. So what What? What are we... What? Four. Here is a clarity we can offer. Our goal is to transform harm, not, quote, cancel Warren Ellis or anyone else. We cannot and will not sign off on his moral progress. We decline to be the authority on who is allowed to work in what context. I mean, that's nice, but the companies have said that you are. So are you releasing them from that burden? Is there a statement here that says Image Comics should make their own decisions and you know, or or leave it up to the union? Um, but we're we're staying out of it, or like we release Image from the obligation to wait through our process. Like, but anyway, we reaffirm our support for the right of creators to be paid for their work, as well as right of publishers, creatives, and others to determine who they work with. And it sounds like a a statement designed to you know fend off and future lawsuit to me. But okay. Um, then they continue, uh, and it says number, okay, so they're the aim of what they want people to do. Number one, please keep your engagement respectful. Both parties have experienced undue harassment. Please do not harass Warren Ellis. Do not harass his friends and collaborators. Do not harass SMOU. We understand the difficult feelings like frustration or anger that can be surrounding this topic, but trolling does not serve to reduce harm, nor does it move the conversation more. I, uh, maybe I'm doing that right now. I, I, I'm, tr I, yeah, I don't know what to say. Two, structures for accountability within industry are necessary and must come from the industry itself. Okay, I agree with that. I, I'm so, so first statement here, I'm in. I'm definitely in alignment. There, and again, I know many of you listening to this right now disagree with this statement, but the industry does have issues and it should fix those issues. I think where we differ is in the process of how we fix these issues. And me being a pragmatic kind of guy, I look at this stuff and go, uh, yeah, th this, this doesn't feel like a path to fixing the problems, but sure. Uh, sorry, we continue. Industry leaders ought to develop, apply, maintain systems to protect and empower vulnerable groups. Hell, all groups, right? Why vulnerable? Just, just everyone. Again, fair, right? 
Specific system we'd like to see dismantled include the protected status of celebrities, the limited public understanding of both abuse and consent, the way irony can be used as a shield, and the implementation of enforced and toxic hierarchies. Read more about those systems here. Um, sure. I, I mean, like, like, why don't you just take down Twitter? I mean, wouldn't that be a good option? Why don't you not let message boards where the moderators are called, like, what, filthy animals? What, what were they uh, on the Ellis forums? Like, I, again... You know, can somebody talk to Heidi McDonald about maybe not joking and laughing this stuff off? I mean, seems like Heidi herself violated every single rule you've got here. But now she's a respected reporter of comics? Like, what? Number three, please keep engaging with the topic of accountability in general. We are heartened every time we see someone insist that an organization address issues surrounding abuse by the people they hire. Keep supporting transparency. Similarly, we are glad to see people discussing how to recognize patterns of abusive behavior, including adult grooming, abuse of power, and consent violation. Knowing about these types of abuse is the first step to being able to recognize and address it. Well, again, you know, maybe have uh, rules in your company and then live by those rules and maybe pattern those rules off of, you know, laws would be a good idea. And maybe, uh, you know, don't, don't uh, have a message board where... You encourage women to show their tits and then don't show your tits. Like maybe that would be, I, I, again, I, I like a lot of, th this is a frustration of the Ellis situation. So many of these situations is like they feel remarkably avoidable, like, like super, super avoidable. But anyway, we continue. We ask and encourage those close to Warren Ellis as well as those willing to support him in his efforts toward accountability, reach out directly to our facilitator. And then there's a, a email to the facilitator. Um, okay. It, you know, again, as I said before, I think there are problems in the industry. I know there's problems in the industry. I've seen firsthand, you know, people, you know, put their hand down somebody's pants or grab somebody and uh, force kiss them. I've seen that go both directions, women doing it to men and men doing it to women. Um, I've seen a lot of behavior cons. Now, we could decide, like, hey, that's a party atmosphere and nobody cares. Like, you, you could make that choice, but why, you know, I, I don't think that's a good choice. And I think that, you know, I, I mean, look, I, I mean, if you're a company, you have to run a professional shop. If you go to 7-Eleven and you say to, you know, the guy working at 7-Eleven uh, decides to just stop wearing pants one day. You know, at some point, the management, the owner of 7-Eleven is going to say, hey, you need to wear pants. And if you don't, you're fired. And then, you know, one of two things happens. Either pants show up or the guy gets fired and it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Why is it the comics struggle with these kinds of rules? It, it's just weird to me. And why are they, why are they randomly applied based on like who's pissed at who at the time? There were stories that I heard after the fact coming out of uh, New York City Comic Con that indicated that there was still a lot of dumb shit bar con behavior going on. And, like, are, do we just have to kind of hang out and wait for three years from now when these stories are going to hit and somebody's going to get canceled because somebody got pissed? Like, what, what, why, what, what, what are we doing? And, again, this, this update is, is, is weird. It's just, it's just weird. I, so the, the best news about all this is that some of the 60 women or so that signed on to this thing said, you know, I'm moving on with my life. And I got whatever I wanted out of this process, and I'm moving on. That is good news. People moving on is good news. The uh, change in acronym and the the stuff here. I mean, like, look, it, it feels like we're all dancing around uh, a bunch of a bunch of nonsense. Like, it doesn't feel like we're solving the problem. It feels like we're just continuing to fart around, uh, wanting to kind of make a a parade out of this, as opposed to actually solve problems. So, I, I like to solve problems. I again. I know several of you listening right now say there are no problems and that I'm, again, I'm being a pussy for talking about that there are problems. Okay. I mean, that you're, that's your opinion, man. I, I think to, to quote the dude, it, whatever you want. But this, this process, I think hopefully most of us can agree on is like, where does this go? And do you feel any confidence that at the end of this, it will prevent, I, I mean, I, at the, I mean, that is the best outlook on this is that some Cameron Stewart like crazy behavior doesn't happen because people saw this mind numbing process and go, I want to avoid that. And so they, they act better at a con. They don't get quite as drunk. And, and so 
you know, I, I, I guess if that's the outcome of all this, I mean, that that's good. It would still be better if comic companies simply enforced the rules they have. Seriously, that that would be an option. Um, you know, a lot of these things there are established guidelines that exist, and all you have to do is literally enforce the rules you have in place. When you see kind of over the top crazy nonsense, like nonsense that makes you think, I wonder if this person is uh, bolted on correctly or drunk um, on their social media account. Maybe you send somebody from HR to like uh, say, hey, buddy, what's going on? You, you, you're talking about uh, killing yourself again and uh, taking a bunch of people with you on Twitter. Why? Like, why? Maybe is everything OK? Are you all right? You know, just just to be aware, you know, that this violates our social media policy. Maybe you should take that down. Hey, when you go to that uh, convention there and, and uh, you know, you're ordering your ninth drink and, you know, you, you look like you peed yourself because there's a giant wet stain on your pants, and I don't know if it's a drink or somebody spilled it on you, or you actually did pee yourself. Maybe you've had too much. Maybe you should head on up to your hotel room. Like, I don't know. As I say this stuff out loud, it's like, or maybe you could just be a grown-up. <laughs> I, I feel bad for the people who legitimately get caught in this kind of stuff, and I guess the the nasty feeling I have about all this, the, the real bad feeling I have, is that I'm very confident that there's some women out there. And again, we need to be fair to everyone, women, men, everything. But, you know, if this was, uh, we're talking about abuse toward women with this particular case, I'm pretty confident that there is some, you know, bad shenanigans, bad abuse that's happening right now in comics that is flying under the radar because, you know, it, nobody's really paying attention, but instead we have this carnival sideshow of whatever this thing is. Um, S M O U hyphen T J. Okay. Okay. Again, I, I hope, I hope this, I, you know what? I hope this ends in a good place somewhere. I maintain my prediction that at some point image is going to be like, wow, we need some more Nellis money. Print that comic. It looks like he's done all of his work. And then maybe S M O U hyphen T J alpha two we'll publish a statement saying, wait, wait, we weren't done yet. And then, you know, we can, we can all talk about that drama. If, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I mean, I'm just in a bad mood. I, I read this stuff and I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on here. Thanks for listening.